Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the vendor display tanks at the Aquatic Experience 2019. They are really cool. I think you're going to enjoy it. If you haven't had a chance yet, check out the other video we did on the aquascaping contest. A lot of really cool tanks. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. Some of the fish that you see here today, we have more information on that. Again, I'll put those videos in the description below. I think you're really going to enjoy it. In the comments section, I'd love to hear from you. What was your favorite tank? Stay tuned. All right, so these are the tanks before you ever actually get into the aquatic experience. Here we've got a glowfish tank. Kind of cool to look at. Not sure if it's necessarily my thing. This was the tank right across on the other side. It was a male peacock tank. Look at the colors of these fish. It was one of my favorite tanks to look at. Just so much variety. Yeah, there were some hybrids in here. Yes, there were some OBs, but there was a really fantastic OB. Very nice deep reds and deep blues. I love the way this tank was set up. I love the way the fish were interacting with everything. It's just a nice tank to look at as you're waiting to get into the facility. Just kind of hang out, take a look. And one of the things that I really began to appreciate as I walked through the aquatic experience is the detail of a lot of these tanks and how much time it takes to get these things up and running and they're only gonna be up for a few days and then they all have to be taken down for a lot of us. I mean, at least for me personally, you have a 125 gallon fish tank like this, to set it up like that, it's kind of an all day thing. And the last thing I'd ever wanna do is take it down a few days later, but just a really nice looking tank. Now here, you can see, this is the aquatic experience. I filmed this before it was open, just so that we didn't have lots of people uh, obstructing the view, but you could see this is kind of the view you get when you walk in. A lot going on, there's a lot of vendors, a lot of cool display tanks that we're going to see. The tanks that we're looking at as we kind of pan over here to the left, those were some of the raffle tanks, which were pretty awesome. People could win those. On Sunday, they did a drawing. And here we've got another view, kind of looking down one of the aisles. I didn't really take us through and walk down all the aisles just because it would have been a long walk and taken a long time to do it. But at least you get an idea of what aquatic experience is like. If you've never been there before, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, it's fun. You get to see the latest and greatest that all the vendors have. Obviously the fish are really cool. There is an ACA cichlid competition, which I will show you in a future video, but a lot of cool stuff. Take a look at this. This was just a display tank. This wasn't part of the aquascaping contest. Again, I've got that video in the description below, but this was really just so cool to see. A lot of really awesome fish and plants and just the whole way the thing was put together. I like it quite a bit. A lot of neons showing a lot of color and those combined with the rainbow fish are pretty awesome. And again, I would love to hear from you. What is your favorite tank? There's a lot of nice ones. Yeah, this one's really cool, but there's just so many different varieties. I think you're gonna like all of the different types of tanks that you see and the diversity in terms of the way things are decorated, the types of fish that were there. There really is something for everybody at the aquatic experience. And if you like goldfish, check them out. Nice little display tank right when you walk in. I say little, but it was probably close to 75 gallons. A very relaxing tank to look at. Here's another one right as you walk in. This was a larger display tank. Like the way it looks, got some plants in there, got some rock work, pretty cool fish. One of my favorites right here. I love African cichlids, I love Mbuna, and I think when you get the, these tanks right, they can be so rewarding to look at. We have a 75 gallon in our fish room, but this was pretty awesome. If it were me, I'd probably set it up just like this. Joanna makes fun of me because I love the piles of rocks, and they have two piles of rocks in this tank, which I think are pretty cool. Like the way the dark rocks and the lighter sand work together. Now, obviously, give these fish about, I don't know, maybe a week or two, and this tank will be very different looking. They would most likely rip up all the jungle valve and start stacking sand everywhere and building pits and trying to breed, but just a really cool tank to look at. 
if it were my tank, maybe I would switch it up and add some yellow labs, maybe some red zebras, but just, it was very, very relaxing to look at. One of my favorite tanks in all the aquatic experience. This was a nice cube tank, a decent size, heavily planted, got some driftwood in the center, packed full of bleeding heart tetras and some knee or some black neons and then we've got some angelfish kind of swimming around there some smaller angelfish but it was a nice tank really cool looking here you can see a little bit of a zoomed in shot again with our different types of tetras yeah i really like the bleeding hearts again some of these fish are really common and i hope that's one of the things that we appreciated with the aquascaping contest is you can have some common fish but once you put them in the right environment they really do look amazing a really interesting tank so it's packed full of mollies and sword tails, but as we start to look a little bit closer, we're gonna see some fish that are a little bit unusual, at least I think they are. And so look at this. Look at the finish on these sword tails. Curious, is this something that you would want in your fish tank? Because when I saw this, I don't generally keep a lot of sword tails, but when I saw these, this is definitely something I would love to have in our fish room. Same thing with the sail fin mollies. I just think they look awesome. This was a nice tank. You've got some severums here. And of course, severums, when they're first getting settled in, they're often a little bit reclusive. We've actually done a species profile on these fish. They're really, really cool, especially as they get older and larger. They get a lot of color, fairly gentle. They will destroy most plants. So any plants you see in here, if they are real, eventually they would go bye-bye. But it's a nice combination with electric blue acara. This was really interesting. So here we have some more severums. We can see they're a little bit larger. And there are different types. We've got the gold, we've got the red golds, we've got a green severum in here. And then we've got these parrotfish. They're very interesting. So the ones on the on the left and the right, you've got the severum in the center. It's almost like they're posing. And I'm assuming that that severum or one like it was bred uh, possibly with a, a Midas cichlid or a red devil. And then you get the patterns on these parrotfish. I know a lot of people don't like them. I just think these ones, at least the coloration is very interesting. I hadn't seen these before, the aquatic experience. I'm wondering what you think. I mean, are parrotfish something that you would keep or is this something you kind of stay away from? But at least the coloration is, is kind of interesting. And here you can see another picture. And they've got some tinfoil barbs in here as well. But another nice relaxing tank. Severums tend not to move too quick and the parrotfish don't either. Uh, this is a nicely aquascape tank as well. It's on the smaller side, but Again, I, I like the white sand with the plants and the bonsai trees, pretty cool. You can see here, they've got some tetras. And once again, we've got a relatively common fish, but it looks pretty awesome given the setup. And these ones don't even have a lot of color, but the way the lights shimmer off of them, it's pretty interesting. I love the look of this tank as well. These were some pretty sweet tetras. I, don't know what they almost kind of look like the coloration of a von rio tetra and i'll show you those in a moment but those are pretty awesome uh, this was a really sweet flower horn in one of the display tanks right when you walk in they had them all kind of lined up and yeah, just really pretty just kind of hanging out this was a larger cube tank probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 90 gallons maybe but it was just a really pretty fish with great colors and not a huge nougal hump which was kind of interesting uh, this is a another tank here kind of a mix of fish the question i have for you we can see in the upper right hand corner we've got some ballast sharks and one of the things that kind of struck me as i walked through the aquatic experience and i'm wondering how you feel should we have display tanks featuring fish that will eventually be far too large for the tank in which they are displayed so it's just something that crosses my mind. I know it looks cool, but I wonder if maybe we should back off of something like that, especially when we've got the public here and you see, oh my gosh, look at all these awesome ballast sharks and eventually they're gonna need a monster tank. Uh, this was really cool. Uh, look at the coloration of these guppies. Both the males and females had fantastic color. I like the way it was aquascaped. And you're gonna see some of the tanks, they go really hard on live plants and making it look as natural as possible other displays we've got some plastic plants and yet in this one you've actually got a mix so it really just comes down to personal preference i think they can both look pretty cool this was the fluval displays uh, that we see here and they've got some shrimp in this tank which is pretty nice uh, this was the larger uh, 
Fluval tank. Not necessarily, I don't think it was in their booth, but it was one of the tanks that they were, that was being displayed. Uh, here we've got some Rasboras, and again, a relatively common fish, but in the right setting, it look, looks absolutely fantastic. Here is yet another one uh, with some rainbows. I like these fish quite a bit. I think they're very pretty. They worked well in this tank, pretty active fish. Take a look at this rainbow tank. I really like this one. It's a lightly scaped rainbow tank, but the stars of the tank are the rainbows. What I like what they did here is they gave the fish room to swim. Sometimes you see these aquascape tanks with rainbows and they don't have sufficient amounts of room. I don't do a lot of salt water. There was salt water here, but I just like seahorses. This was a cool tank as well. It was more of a natural feel, uh, rather unusual fish. I'm assuming this is a black gar, but something you don't often see, and they had three of them in this tank. They're gonna get larger, but just a really cool thing to look at. And now this was an interesting tank, and I know a lot of us feel strongly that maybe the glowfish aren't the best thing, they don't look natural, but there's something going on in this tank that I had not yet seen in person. Yes, I had seen all the glow light tetras before. They are very common. And I almost just disregarded this tank as I walked by. I'm like, okay, this is the third glowfish tank that I've seen. I get it. But then, as you look closer, what do you start to see? There aren't just glow tetras in here that are glowfish. They got tiger barbs. But look at here. They now have rainbow sharks that are glowfish. And I had heard that these were coming out. I had heard that they had been produced. And maybe some of you had seen them before. I never had. I've never seen them in real life. I just heard that they were gonna be a thing. It was pretty interesting to look at. I mean, we got some pink ones. There are some yellowy ones, purple. It's a shame they didn't actually have the black light on this tank, but just, it, it's definitely an unusual thing to see. It's, like I said, it's something I hadn't seen before. I don't know, maybe some of you have seen these. I don't know if some of you are interested in keeping them. It's just something different to look at. These are genetically modified, so it's not like they're dyed or anything like that. There's another tank that I thought was kind of interesting. A lot of silver dollars. I thought I saw some datinoids in here, some silver arowana were in here as well. The tank was probably in the neighborhood of around 100, maybe 125 gallons. Uh, definitely an interesting thing to look at. All the silver really shimmered. You could certainly see it as you're coming down the aisle. This was one of those tanks that stood out quite a bit. Look at this Pleco, same tank. Uh, this thing was just kind of showing off and most of the time it was hiding. So I happened to walk by and see it when it was just kind of hanging out. Uh, that was pretty cool. Here's another rainbow display tank. This was, a, I think it was a 125, uh, pretty interesting. And again, we've got lots and lots of live plants. I like the mix of the sand and the darker substrate. I've never done anything like that before, but it was just kind of interesting, kind of gave it a natural feel. And then we had the tanks at the Oasi booth. This was pretty cool. George Farmer was there. He kind of took me around and showed me the tanks. Uh, very nicely aquascape, very relaxing to look at. I like them quite a bit. In some of the tanks, there were some livestock. and others, it was just the aquascape, which was interesting. Here's one of the bio orbs. I saw these at Aquashella as well. I find them interesting, especially if you are into a planted ecosystem. Uh, here we've got a little bit of the, the water vapor kind of coming down, which is a really cool look but just a very clean looking thing. Probably not something really necessarily designed for fish, but it's just, it was really awesome to look at. I found myself looking at this for quite some time. Uh, you're, here you can see another angle. I guess the cool thing about an orb, especially if you put it where it's visible from all angles, is you'd get a different feel depending on the angle that you're looking at. So here uh, we've got another display and I like this one. They've got some cherry shrimp in here, very simply done but yet I think it shows the power of what aquascaping can be where you just need a little bit of stone and a little bit of plants and you can have something that looks pretty nice. Uh, this was another display. And again, we're keeping some relatively common fish here, but they're shown off well because of the aquascape. And when the aquascape can take on some of that visual uh, desire, then the fish just look that much better. And these fish, as they grow larger, they would look even better because they'd get more color really cool tank to look at.
This was the tank at the Project Piaba booth. Pretty cool. It was a Blackwater tank. They had a couple of them. By the way, I'm going to have an interview with Project Piaba coming up here in the next few days. So check that out when it comes out. It should be pretty interesting. Here's another display tank. I like the dimensions of this tank. It was fairly long. I want to say somewhere in the 30 to 36 inch or so. Uh, relatively short. I just like those tanks because of the surface area. They had a few tiger barbs in here long term. That number of tiger barbs probably wouldn't work, but it worked well as a display. Uh, there was a vendor that had three relatively large fish tanks. This was one of them, and they were actually selling fish. Some pretty cool fish. They were all close to full size. At least a lot of them were, or at least they were moderately sized, what will eventually become monster fish. So you see the stingrays, a couple nice geophagus. We've got the flag tail, uh, the nice severum. They had in this tank, and I'll show you in a second, two very, very, very large clown loaches. These two here were probably close to a foot long. They were massive clown loaches, really cool. Uh, here's another smaller tank. Uh, this is something I think a lot of us can maybe accomplish, and it's one of the reasons why I like going to these different, you know, the aquatic experience and all these different conventions, because you get ideas of how you can aquascape your own tanks, and some of them are rather, they're pretty achievable. You know, something like this, where you've got a whole bunch of plants in the back, and these look to be fake plants and you've got some real moss balls in the front uh, some larger gravel here is another glowfish tank this is different from the one that was up front and again it's it's not for everybody but it's kind of cool for what it is uh, this was a i really really like this tank uh, they had some giant daniels at the top and then look at the check out these rams look at how pretty they look now i think the flow on this filter is way too strong for this tank they must have a rather large filter for this relatively small tank uh, but if you could turn that down you'd have a really awesome situation going there this tank had one of my all-time favorite tetras and that is the von rio tetra i love these fish look at the colors there's so much glare and i apologize for that so the colors really really don't come through on video the way they should but these are fantastic tetras if you ever have a chance to find some pick some up they look absolutely amazing this is the current usa tank uh, they were at Aquashella as well, and this is usually a fan favorite. You know, you, you can just sit here and look at this tank and watch the backgrounds change color. And I know that's not for everybody, but we do get quite a few comments on the videos when we show this tank, like, wow, yeah, that's pretty awesome, relaxing to look at. And it's just different, you know. Again, my big concern is if you think about it realistically, what happens when the back glass starts to get a little bit of green algae or you start getting some diatom algae in the back? So maybe long term, it's probably not going to look like this all the time. Time, but as a display if you can really keep up with it it's pretty darn cool here's another one uh, here's another aquascape tank lightly aquascaped and again I think this is something that a lot of people could potentially accomplish with just a little bit of wood and some rocks and some plants and you can see here we've just got some common tetras this was the wall of uh, the Florida fish farms so some really interesting fish here you know we've got a couple different types of rams which is pretty cool I really liked this fish, sorry for a little camera shake there, the Meyer's Eye Cichlid. I, I haven't seen these in person, I've read about them, you know, I've, I've seen the pictures of them, but in person they're really pretty, they sparkle. You know, I, I imagine as they get older they lose a little bit of that, and of course the substrate color and the background had something to do with that, I'm sure they would darken up if you put them on a darker substrate, but they're just really pretty, they got the red eyes and they really shimmered in person, I like these fish a lot couple of albino oscars made me miss my albino oscar uh, they're just look really pretty they're in really good shape if you check out their fins and their health uh, they also had some more common fish things like barbs and tetras and i didn't go through and show this entire wall because there's just so much there and i just didn't have the time to do that this is an awesome fish the cuban cichlid if you want to see a much larger one check out the fish room tour we did a fi tim's fish room i'll put that in the description below but these fish are really really cool uh, they look a little bit like a jaguar but i kind of prefer these over the jaguar cichlid i think they're just awesome this was the last of the tanks that i looked at I, this thing's awesome the jellyfish tank i think if i was ever going to do salt water this is probably something i might consider so this was the aquatic experience 2019 hope you enjoyed the video and if you did share subscribe and we'll see you in the next one